What are the best Yu-Gi-Oh decks post Rage of the Abyss? Big dog, I'm raging right now. I'm angry just like you because there are so many strategies inside of this set that we have to talk about, whether there are strategies that are getting supported or brand spanking new. Today, I'm gonna be breaking down every single one of them and giving you the heads up on the strategies that are too strong or strategies that should rage into a different abyss. Hey bro, you can be angry all you want. Just check out the shirt. Check out the shirt. You know how many that gift now let's go ahead and jump on in what's going on with ya big dog and it is an amazing day for Yu-Gi-Oh. i hope that your day phenomenal but if it isn't, don't let what happened at the beginning of your day ruin the rest of your day. So today, like I said before, this is going to be a tier list based on the best strategies in Yu-Gi-Oh! post Rage of the Abyss. And as per usual, Big Dog, we gotta have a criteria, a standard that we're doing these particular strategies on. The first of many criterias is simple. We're going to be rating these strategies based on how strong they have been, but more importantly, how impactful the new support is going to be for these decks one thing i absolutely love about rage of the abyss is that there is a support for certain strategies that make them insane like really loco but if we're going to be honest with ourselves and not cope some of the other support is mid and and that's the best way to say it of course i'm going to guide you through that but the next most important thing we got to talk about is how powerful these strategies are coming into the current meta Last week, Big Dog, I made a video about the top meta Yu-Gi-Oh decks. And while this is going to be some brand spanking new strategies and some ideas that will throw the meta on its head, it still needs to be able to address the current situation that we're in. And third and most importantly, I think the most important thing about these early beginning tier list is that we have to judge these strategies based on their potential. Genuinely, hands down, are they gonna be smacking up everything they see in sight? Or do they need a player to be able to build on top of what they have? Have or possibly even more support. Let's go ahead and start off this tier list with A, B, C. I'm actually disappointed that I threw up gang signs for this tier list. If you're from LA, you know. ABC didn't get direct support, but it did get a new monster in Union Pipe. And while this is pretty much a nod to Union Driver, it's Union support, not ABC support. This card, like any other Union monster, can equip itself to another monster to the field, but its other effect allows you to be able to return it to the hand to equip a banished monster that can be equipped to one of your monsters to your side of the field. And then you get to summon Union Pilot to the side of the field. I think that this support is... Okay, the biggest problem with ABC is extenders, being able to put enough bodies to your side of the field to gain the effects of your A's, your B's, and your C's now. And while Union Pilot can help with that, summoning itself as a body and equipping a banished part, it pretty much already means that you have to have your combo going in the first place. Yeah, ABC right now is going to be RIAA, which means raging into another abyss for me. See if we can find those letters. I think once we get more ABC support, there are some new cards coming out for the strategy. It will be stronger. But for right now, I wouldn't even try. Next is Goblin Bikers, everybody's favorite deck. Big dog, why you like Goblin Biker, huh? You know, there's something about this name that's telling me a lot about you. Goblin Biker is a deck built on being able to exceed summon into threes, into sixes, and now nines. It also has another cool gimmick where it can attach monsters to your exceed monsters as material. The new monster, Badass Goblin Bikers, is the first level six monster for the strategy, which enables it to go to nine because the deck is good at level modulation and allows you to summon another goblin monster from your deck when it is summoned. The new spell card, Goblin Biker Grand Imprisonment, holy crap, what do PDD, R. Kelly, and Goblin Bikers have in common? That's crazy. Allows you to be able to tribute a monster to summon a goblin biker monster from your deck. Now, I'm not gonna lie. These goblin biker cards seem way behind when it comes to a new wave of support. Badass goblin biker needing to be normal summon? Where they do that at? And grand imprisonment requiring you to tribute a monster. Like, what? I have to give up this card plus a monster just to get another one from my deck? What are we, in 2012? Now these effects aren't all bad. Goblin Biker doesn't necessarily need its normal summon, and tributing monsters can be really good at dodging card effects like Impermanent Effect Vein. Despite these effects being mid in comparison to some of the other support we received, I think Goblin Bikers does have map potential. Having access to rank 3s and rank 6s has already been a problem, but now that the deck can have easier access to rank 9s and is a lot more consistent, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a nod of approval and say that it can be a pretty good deck. Next 
is going to be Battle Wasp. Bro, why am I here? I don't know about you guys, but every time I see an insect deck, I go back to Bee Troopers or I go back to Weevil Underwood. <laughs> My insects will ruin you. Maxi the three. Unfortunately for insect players, Maxi is not off the ban list. Battle Wasp's new monster rapier, the Furious, allows you to be able to discard a card to summon itself to the side of the field. And it also gets the new spell card, Battle Wasp Win, which is essentially a black whirlwind for the deck. I think that this is kind of cooking. These are some legitimately powerful Yu-Gi-Oh cards, but the problem is, is that it's Battle Wasp support. We all know that Battle Wasp can intermingle with the other insect archetypes, but it probably would have been better if this was B Trooper support, as that strategy has the biggest chance of busting into the meta. I think right now the deck will be crawling out of the woodwork, but probably in the wrong way. I'm going to be raging it into another abyss right here. Again, really, really strong support, but the problem with Battle Wasp is that it's not even modernized yet. They got some really cool cards that can help them and insects in total, but not enough to put them on the map, in my opinion. Next is Centurion. Centurion is... Man, what are we doing here? Bro, this is the fifth wave of support for Centurion. I might be over-exaggerating, I could be spot on, but all I know is we need more Vanquish Soul support. Callie, calm down. Don't talk about Vanquish Souls again. The new Centurion support does help solve more Centurion problems. They now have a level eight Synchro monster that can get an Emblem card to the hand. This means that any way you can Synchro Summon into eight is essentially full Centurion combo. They also get Centurion Cymela, which turns any response to your cards as place a centurion card into your spell and trap card zone instead yeah this is going to be the very first strategy that is a solid choice for me i don't want to put it as best available because we've seen time after time again centurion get the support that it needs and then falls flat i'm not falling for that no more y'all said that centurion was going to be amazing with bonfire y'all said it was going to be amazing with auxilla this is the next opportunity that we are saying centurion is amazing i think it will be a really good deck highly respected but not the best. What's really wrong is that on the wiki page, Rage of the Abyss says we're getting blue eye support. By no way, shape, or form, blue eyes of heart is blue eye support. To give you a little bit more context, this is actually Grandpa Moto's blue eyes, and by discarding it, it gets you Millennium Unk from the deck to the hand, which is really important for the Millennium strategy. Also, if your opponent special summons a monster that just so happens to be level eight or higher, or 3,000 or more attack, you can summon this bad puppy. And then you get to send that monster to the graveyard. Hmm. The Millennium strategy hasn't really popped out and showed like we thought it would. And I think one of the biggest problems would be getting into Millennium Unk, mainly because summoning those other Millennium monsters are expansive, and it bites into your Exodia play, seeing that the fusion monster is based off of how many light points you have. I think that this fixes a ton of problems, but I'm still going to go ahead and put it in experimental. Not 100% sure if Millennium is going to be better off as an engine, or if Grandpa's deck could see some type of local to regional success just yet. For me, it's up in the air, but I wouldn't exactly give up on it just yet. Next is Samurai's. Look, big dog, I do not want to talk about this deck for a couple of reasons. A, you six Samurai players are mad. B, I'm pretty sure you can find my home address fairly fast. And C, the way of the warrior is not a way that I want to go against, but we got to today. Six Samurai's got a new synchro monster that is even stronger than their last synchro monster that they got. That one negated spells and traps, this one be stonking on monsters. They also got some other cool support to help the deck feel a little bit more modernized. I'm gonna tell you guys the problem with Six Samurai though right now. There's this one spell card called Gateway of the Six Samurai, and if Six Samurai players could ever find a way to consistently abuse this card, this is probably one of the most broken decks in Yu-Gi-Oh. But seeing that Gateway of the Six Samurai has not came to three, gotten errata, and you guys can't find a way to consistently break it, this deck at best is experimental. Six Samurai does what it does, pretty well the only problem is the thing that it was doing special summoning a ton of monsters doesn't really equate to anything unless you're making huge generic boss monsters that have multiple omni negations and and those don't exist with cards like Appaloosa, Baron, and Warlord Savage Dragon being banned at least not as easily accessible and ready to be made like how six samurais can do it though I do think that there is some room for experimentation to make this deck great now Chimera didn't directly get support but while we're here let's talk about all of these strategies I'm gonna go ahead and move you here because you're really really important to talk about snake eyes unfortunately we got to talk about and as amina we got to talk about alongside of you bell all of these strategies can pretty much be clumped together as we talk about them. and i think it's best to start talking about how azamina and the new fiendsmith card works so the new fiendsmith card name is lacrima do not confuse it with the monster that's banned 
I mean, if anything, Lacrima the Scarlet Sorrow should be called Slacrima because she been slacking. If she came out before, you guys would have hated Fiendsmith even sooner. She allows you to be able to send a Fiendsmith monster from the deck to the graveyard, and at first sight, that may not seem really powerful. But then you start to realize that instead of summoning Engraver of the Fiendsmith, you can summon her and send Engraver, and now your combos are even more insulated. She allows this deck to be able to get more light Fiend monsters into the graveyard, making Desiree even easier to summon. And while I want to emphasize that Fiendsmith Agnu Duse is a Yu-Gi-Oh card, we don't even care about that. Fiendsmith is probably one of the better engines in Yu-Gi-Oh because of Lacrima. And I gotta say that it is one of the best available. The only difference is it's going to be really weird on how players are going to be using this engine. You're going to see a lot more builds playing just two engraver. You're going to see some builds play just one engraver because of this new card. And if you saw my video talking about sell these cards before they plummet in price, I still do very much believe that the Fiendsmith engine is going to drop a little bit. So selling these cards while the price is at its highest is not a bad idea. And if you want more information, go ahead and check out the video. The Azamina cards like Fiendsmith are another Yu-Gi-Oh engine. I mean, yes, they're archetypes and they could be decks on their own, but not really. There's not enough cards. The most important cards for this strategy is Sacred Azamina, which allows you to be able to fusion summon using Sinful Spoils cards. This is kind of, it's kind of stupid. And the next card is Sinful Spoils Deception, which allows you to be able to tribute a monster to be able to add an Azamina card from your deck to your hand. So essentially, Deception can tribute a monster to search your sacred Azamina, which can send the Deception to summon any of your level 6 Azamina monsters. The two most important is Arcealago, which allows you to be able to add a Sinful Spoils or an Azamina card from your deck to your hand, and Rhea Severa, which can tribute itself to be able to negate a card effect anywhere. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, this is, this is kind of ridiculous. Engines are starting to become really really insane in Yu-Gi-Oh because these two are easily the best available and it's going to shape how these particular strategies are going to be built. Take for example, Snake Eyes is back to being one of the best strategies in the entire game. That's right guys, we've had less than 30 days off of seeing Snake Eyes dominate a format and right now it's pretty much predicted that Snake Eyes will come back to the top. Diabel the Black Witch has become even more important for the strategy as it can bridge between both the Azamina cards as well as your snake eyes cards oh and did i forget the fiendsmith cards are still very much playable inside of this deck giving it the omni disruption between desiree and silvera is gonna feel just like borlode savage dragon and better on the floor i know you guys are missing that i know you guys are missing those omni negates stay back my boy since snake eyes is just so generic and really good at putting bodies on the field kind of like what six samurai wanted to do but a little worse this deck has been ridiculous now chimera has also found itself in a really interesting spot because the deck naturally does play illusions and fiend monsters both the fiend smith and the azamina engines can be played pretty decently especially considering that the azamina monsters are illusion this strategy has probably found itself in the best possible position the only problem is that it has to look at snake eyes a strategy that just kind of benefits from them being around but not fully as the better deck and Yubel, while not having any type of synergy with the illusion cards definitely has a ton of synergy with the fiendsmith this is also one of the best decks available one of the biggest things that Yubel lost from the ban list was beatrice the eternal lady allowing you to be able to full combo just in case you get disrupted enough well one thing's for sure because of the new fiendsmith engine you can now have easier access to aerial eater to be able to send your samsara d lotus and then make her craker to be able to summon back your samsara so essentially it's beatrice at home currently my line of thinking is that both azamina and the fiendsmith engine are catastrophic for Yu Gi Oh. but i'm going to do even more testing we're going to do even more research and hope that it's not as bad as it seems. Next is Whitewoods, which kind of benefits. Azamina Rhea Survivor is a Whitewoods card, lore-wise. And Whitewoods did get into the card, the Fiend of the White Forest, though I'm not 100% sure if that's what we were looking for. I still think that the deck has map potential. Just like how players found out how to make Sky Striker competitive in 2024, I think those same players will figure out how to make white woods a decent Yu-Gi-Oh deck and no shots to you sky striker players though i do have the fbi on speed dot come at me if you want to dog fire kings have confirmed yokonics inside of rage of the abyss and oh my god i'm excited yokonics helps complete the strategy but the biggest problem with fire king is that snake eyes just might be better i'm not talking about snake eyes fire king hell i'm not even talking about snake eyes fire king fiends i'm talking about just dropping off fire king and playing Snake Eyes, Fiendsmith, Azamina. 
Regardless, though, it is one of the best strategies to come out of the deck. I think it is 100% a solid choice. And if you guys want us to play Fire King against Mermails, the ultimate fire water matchup, let us know down below in the comment section. Because next is going to be Mermail. And this is a complete revival from hell. Mermail's got a few new cards that really help the deck. Abyss Shrine allows you to be able to summon a Mermail or Lantian from your deck or get it to your hand. Shadow Bodyguards can turn all your monsters to level seven, but can also summon a Mermail or Atlantean from your deck. And the new boss monster allows you to be able to bounce up to three cards. Bro, 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 Year of the Water just might be here. I think one of the biggest differences between the TCG and the OCG is one powerful Yu-Gi-Oh card. Totally awesome is the Omni Negation card that we are all looking for inside of our decks. And because this exists with Mermel, as well as it being a deck that can fluently play into boards, as well as has ways to play against hand traps, I think that this is above map potential. I think it's also a solid choice Yu-Gi-Oh deck. It's gonna be so fun to test Fire King versus Mermel, and again, if you guys want to see a Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Challenge, which one is better, go ahead and like this video and let us know down below. Now, just like Blue Eyes getting support in Rage of the Abyss, Red Eyes got support. Konami, you sneaky. If a Yu-Gi-Oh! player buys this set thinking that it's going to make Red Eyes better, well, you get a Red Eyes monster. The Metal Morph cards are based on turning your monsters Metal Morph, getting out powerful monsters like Red Eyes, Black Fool Metal, and Metal Zoa X. I genuinely like these cards. I think they're fun. Bandit Keith slash Joey support is awesome. But if we're going to be five real, bro, you got to raise this one into another abyss, big dog. This strategy is not picking up off the ground unless it gets more support. Though when you look at the cards and you read them, it does look like it is getting more support. So there's that. I can't wait for Heavy Metal Slot Machine and Launch Spider, bro. We go be cooking. Memento, big dogs, the memes. Memento Memento got more support. I'm not even going to say anything about Vanquish Soul this time because Memento is already a really good Yu-Gi-Oh deck, right? Surely the new support is just to help give us a reminder of that and it isn't actually good. It allows your level nine or higher Memento monsters to attack directly. Is it? Memento Teclecula 5000 attack. It then allows you to add a Memento card from Banishment or your graveyard to your hand if it's destroyed. Like Memento Fusion that you banish to do its effect. Huh. It also says if a Memento monster in your hand or face-up field is destroyed by Battle or Card Effect while it's in your graveyard, special summon this. What are we doing here? Memento at the very lowest is solid choice. And the only reason why I'm even going to put it in a solid choice is because I don't think it can keep up with these two top bad puppies when it comes to these two engines. But if I'm wrong, it is easily one of the best decks available i just don't understand why does this deck get more support where others don't get the correct support now mimigool did get some cool cards and we talked about them at length on cali effect clips so go ahead and check out that video check out that channel and after discussing mimigool the support did make the deck better mimigool slime is a free mimigool card mimigool knight he's cool and the mimigool exceeds between attacking directly, searching cards, equipping and mounting, summoning monsters kind of do everything for the deck. There's only one huge problem with Mimigool though. The deck still isn't good enough. Now hear me out guys, before you start coming at me crazy, I think that Mimigool is one of the better TCG exclusives that we had. It's way better than, well it's not better than War Rock, but it's way better than decks like Gold Pride, right? And Ashen. Let's be real, nothing's better than War Rock, not even Burning Abyss. But there are some clear problems with this strategy that actually make Mimigul really bad. I'm just gonna give you one. The new card, Dominus Impulse, prevents you from being able to activate Earth, Wind, and I believe Fire Monsters the duration of the turn. But it's definitely gonna correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure it's not Fire, it's like Light or something, right? <laughs> It just so happens that all your Mimigool monsters just so happen to be Earth. So if people are going to be playing Dominus Impulse, which a lot of decks will, and they just so happen to resolve Dominus Impulse from the hand, they can't activate the Mimigool monsters that you're sending their way. But there's also other cards that are just naturally good that players are going to be using. I think one of them is Dark Hole. The card is a lot better than what people are going to give it credit. I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer, guys. I'm just trying to put it in perspective. I think that Mimigool does have a ton of potential. And I think it'd be a crime to put it anything below that. But I want you guys to temper your expectations before you say Mimigool is the next Warrock. You know nobody's topping Warrock. 
Phoenix. While Monica gets a trap card that makes them really good. Gee, I wonder what other strategy needs some, ah, uh, just, I'll see myself out. The only problem here is that Monica has been seeing zero play. And while the trap card does make the deck stronger, I really don't see how that's going to change the entire fortunes of the strategy. Volmonica's actually good. But if you're going to start mixing things like Fiend Smith to make Volmonica better, <laughs> just play a better deck. Primordial is the new strategy that's coming out of Rage of the Abyss. It's built on being able to tribute summon and summon normal monsters. Now, I'm not going to lie, that that's kind of cool, especially where you can prevent your opponent from summoning monsters of certain normal monsters, like the monster Dakadori, Dakadori Aiba. Bro, it is the only fire fiend monster. It allows you to be able to clap up both fiend smith and yubel i think that's cool but let's 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 keep it a bean guys this deck is just uh, no normal monsters are inherently just flat out bad in Yu-Gi-Oh. and this is konami's i think like seventh attempt at making normal monsters good you guys remember gemini monsters pepperidge farm remembers gemini monsters i think that this deck probably has the biggest opportunity though the problem that i see with this particular deck is that konami is going to accidentally empower another mechanic without empowering this properly I can see something like Monarchs becoming meta because of this before this becomes meta. Ragnarok also did get support too. A new trap card. Yeah. Mm -mm. Just like Volmonica, that's not enough to make Ragnarok really powerful. Though I don't think that the strategy is bad, we're definitely going to need a little bit of a boost to be able to keep up with these ultra-powered top-tier engines. Now, it isn't 100% confirmed, but if we're going off a of Master Duel, Ancient Gear Statue could very much be in Rage of the Abyss. And if that does happen, I'm not going to cope with you guys. I think that the deck is really good in Master Duel, but that's because Master Duel was almost a completely different game. In the TCG, the best way to put Ancient Gear is that it is... Tempai Dragon at home. Crawley's deck does have some things that are really good, like the Ancient Gear spell that prevents your opponent from responding to your Ancient Gear cards, the fact that they're Earth Machine, meaning that it can be Earth Machine support. But I think that's pretty much where it stops. It's an experimental deck that could be good in the right player's hands. Sharks, my boy. Sharks are going to be supported throughout the year if Konami decides to give water the same treatment that it did with fire. And I think because of this, sharks have a ton of potential to be really good in the game. I think number C32 Shark Drake Leviathan is a step in the right direction. A genuine boss monster that can end games really quick and prevent monster effects from being used against it. But I'm not sure if that's enough to be able to keep up though. Ice Barriers ironically is on this tier list and you won't believe why. While I was scourging for information about Rage of the Abyss, I did see an interesting Ice Barrier Mermill or Atlantean deck top. And I think that it actually has some wheels. A lot of people say that Ice Barrier isn't strong enough, but Ice Barrier has the right amount of strong cards to be placed inside of an engine inside of other water decks, which I think is incredibly scary. But that being said, I think that it has mad potential and eventually Ice Barrier might be strong enough to take over the spot of Mermel because of its simplicity, its ability to be able to play more cards inside of the deck, like interruption cards, and its versatility over Mermel, which is just kind of like a special summon hand loop negation deck. Allure Queens. Bro, it took me all but five seconds to realize that Allure Queens are probably the worst strategy in the entire set. Like seriously, I would rather put the other three strategies into experimental to keep it away from a lore queen, but that's not justice to you. This deck is, well, if it doesn't get interrupted, it still will lose to things like Darkhold. And lastly, Tenpai Dragon. Tenpai Dragon got support. That support is bad, but Tenpai Dragon still at the very least solid choice maybe even one of the best decks available again while doing that research one of the things that really stuck out was that tenpai dragon even with the field spell at one in the ocg was still one of the most represented decks and even right now tenpai dragon is one of the more powerful decks in the format so i don't think that that will change and that's all that i have for my best decks tier list post rage of the abyss now i know we talked about only strategies that got supported in rage of the abyss and everything in between so if there are some strategies that you think i missed go ahead and let me know down below in the comment section and i can't wait to see what you have to say but until then hug your family drink water and i'll catch you on the next video